Courtney Fromm. And I'm Vinny Sangalein. We hope, you, we hope you all had a wonderful summer. I know I did interning in San Diego, but I also got some beach time. What did you do this summer, Vinny? I had a long love affair with my couch. Oh, well that sounds wonderful. <laughs> um, this past weekend I was able to go out into Old Town Fort Collins and see the wonderful parts of it, including a local concert fundraising money to encourage music in our schools for kids of all ages. In the heart of Old Town Square, people came to dance, listen, and enjoy as they raised money for music in our schools. Everybody's happy. Everybody's upbeat. The band 12 Cents for Marvin celebrated their 20th year of playing music in Fort Collins by being the entertainment for this event. Fort Collins Musicians Association supports the music in our schools movement. Its goal is to raise money and awareness on how important music is to be a part of student education. And what a better way to encourage that than having a free live concert in the beautiful Fort Collins, Colorado. But I know that they usually have something going on on the weekends. You can count on that through the summertime and whatnot down in Old Town. With the main focus being on getting students involved in music, 12 Cent for Marvin had members from Eaton High School come and play with them during their live performance. Overall, giving a wonderful experience for both parents and students in Old Town Square. It always is. It's fun to see the bands, the local bands, everything they've got going on. The pianos are always fun to spot out all the new different painted pianos. The 12 Cents for Marvin Band plans on being a part of this fundraiser for the next several years. If you have any used instruments that you'd like to donate, please reach out to the Music in Our Schools Association. On Monday night, Olympic swimmer and heartthrob Brian Lochte performed on ABC's Dancing with the Stars. With a backlash from his mugging scandal in Rio, there was no surprise that there would be some bad blood between Lochte and the audience. The buzzed about season premiere of However, ABC's what was shocking Dancing was that the two audience members start. who stormed the stage while Lochte that was receiving until critiques Ryan and partner on his Cheryl performance, were listening I mean, to come Gary on people, let us. the man get some feedback. While Lochte was on quote, a little hurt by the incident, he brushed it off, just like he did when those muggers pointed their guns at him. Oh wait, that didn't happen. The two men were tackled by security guards, escorted from the building, and arrested for trespassing. Host of Dancing with the Stars, Tom Bergeron, said after the interruption, we had to go to a little break because there was a little incident, which is what my roommate calls it when her dog poops in my room. I don't consider either of these little incidents, but sure. When we come back, we'll be discussing beer with the mayor of Old Town. And later on, we will show the spotlight on a celebrity. Tune in to KCSU, your student-run radio station at Colorado State University. Live 24 hours a day, every day at 90.5 FM and kcsufm.com. Live local new music now and news, talk, and sports. KCSU, the radio voice of Colorado State, on the air since 1964. You're watching CTV, produced by Colorado State University students, bringing you news, weather, sports, and entertainment from campus and beyond. CTV live Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. on campus and Fort Collins on Channel 11. Repeats at midnight, 8 a.m., noon, and 2 p.m. The Rocky Mountain Collegian is your student-run news and information platform. Pick up your paper on campus or around Fort Collins Monday through Thursday with special editions Fridays. And check out collegian.com anytime for all the latest updates. News, sports, entertainment, opinion, and more. The Rocky Mountain Collegian, serving Colorado State since 1891. College Avenue has been your student magazine for the last 10 years. College Avenue prints once a month covering topics that are relevant to the CSU and Fort Collins community. We also print special editions like the graduation guides at the end of each semester, the best of CSU each fall, and the orientation guide each summer. Look for us on racks around campus, off campus, or online at collegian.com under the College Avenue tab. This is CSU TV 11 from Colorado State University, featuring university programs, student productions, and other community programming. Contact us via email, csutv11 at colostate.edu or call 970-491-6643. Thanks for watching. And we are excited that Ram Life Entertainment is back in business for the semester, and that means Beer Me. Unfortunately, Mr. Vinny is not 21 and you couldn't come, and he's pouting about it, but I was able to make my way down to the mayor in Old Town and enjoy their new Beer 101 class. Wow. 
It started out with three different flights of beer, and somehow we made our way to about 12, traveling by taste all over the world from Belgium to the western United States as I started my journey with my trusty leader, the mayor of Old Town. The triple has a lot of smell. The Duval has a lot of smell, but they have very different smells. Yeah. This was my first class of Beer 101 at the Mayor in Old Town. I was able to not only sample several different beers, but learn the difference between ales and lagers, and learn that beer from Belgium always has a distinct smell. And this is just all the beginning. So we're starting at the top, working with geographical areas, and we're doing subsets below. The Mayor has over 100 beers on tap and has a warm and friendly staff that knows beer well and can help you take a step out of the box from your usual type of beer. Not only that, but this semester, the mayor will be hosting Beer 101 events every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Each week, a different type of beer will be spotlighted and sampled, either presented by a local brewery representative or a member of the mayor team. Oh, taking a smell, I, I, I would imagine that when you taste it, well, we'll see what you think, but go ahead and taste it now. Their passion behind these classes is to teach the public about beer and help each individual find their favorite taste when it comes to social beverage. Join me on my journey throughout this semester as I will be attending every Thursday night to become beer educated at the Mayor. These classes will be every Thursday starting at 7 p.m. and each week will have a new taste to it. This class is open to anyone who's over the age of 21 to learn about craft beer. And I must say that I'm very, very excited about this experience and my first class, I feel like that I'm able to learn so much about beer just already in this short little class. Um, I, I know I'm going to be able to know what I'm talking about when I go out with my friends. Man, I wish I could have been there. Unfortunately, you're not 21 yet, 21 yet Vinny, but one of these days <laughs> you will be able to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's that time of year again. Time for all the beer festivals to be happening. In fact, this weekend is packed full of beer fun events. This weekend, at September, September 17th, starting at 11 in the morning, going till 10 at night, the event is called Zweitoberfest and is celebrating the taping of the Zweitoberfest Marzen at noon. They will include live music from the Nene Polka, Colorado, as well as the live accordion. Yay! <laughs> Food will also be available from the Hush Truck. Make sure to make it out to, these ev to this event and try the new beer. The event will be held at 4612 South Mason Street, Fort Collins, 80525. Coming up, we've got some strange news and we've also got films with Frank. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. Now for some television news. We all know that Saturday Night Live goes through many different actors and actresses when they choose to expand their horizons and break away from the show. We have seen this happen with Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, and many, many more. Running, with running for a total of 42 years, we have found a reshuffle in the cast. This season of SNL is no different. Beginning October 1st, the show will run without some of the summer cast, Jay Farrow, Taryn Killam, and John Raditsky were surprisingly fired over the summer. But the recent openings allows three young comedians to have a new slot on the show. Maybe it can be one of us. I'd hope so. Uh -huh. We'd kill it. So we got Melissa Villaserno is one of the newest members of the show, and she is also the show's first Latina performer. Villaserno, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is currently a comedian based out of Los Angeles. In 2011, she was a cons... cons... Uh, con Contestant, excuse me, on the reality show America's Got Talent. That's amazing. While on the show, she got to showcase her skills as an, impression, uh, an impressionist. Impressionist, wow. Yes. 
With her previous experience, I have a feeling that she's going to be a great addition to the cast. Mike Day is another new member of SNL. Day is also coming straight out of Los Angeles. The, uh, he studied in an improv group called The Groundlings. Some entertainment news companies are saying that the proven talent and will easily fill some of the roles that Terry and Killam could obviously not do. I can honestly say that he's going to kill him it. And last but not least, we are introducing Alex Moffat. He is a performer based out of Chicago, which happens to be some of where previous stars, such as Bill Murray, Chris Farley, and very, very famous SNL stars have also come from. Currently, he has no presence on the online world, no YouTube account, no Twitter, no Instagram. I tried stalking him, but the man just doesn't have anything. It sounds like he's a nomad of it. The new season of Saturday Night Live, and with all the new facts and sketches, are going to prove very great. The Atlantic is saying this, this year's hires and most are going to be amazing, which bodes well for comedy and relies for group dynamics. It's about that time, Vinny. Strange news. Strange news. Strange news. On September 5th. On September 5th, Felix Regan, a Massachusetts man, was arrested and put into the doghouse after he broke into a home. Before fleeing the scene in a stolen car, for fleeing the scene, I'm sorry, in a stolen car, he made sure to take some items from the property. He faces many charges, some of which include breaking and entering, larceny of a motor vehicle, and most importantly, cruelty to, an cruelty to animals. After he broke into the house through a first floor window and decided to paint the family's dog purple. I repeat, he painted the family's dog purple. Who knows what was going through this man's mind when he decided to do this to the poor dog. But one thing I do know is that the dog is lucky to have made it out alive. This man just seems way too violent for me. In other news, the University of Ohio has installed an ATM that can make pizza. Xavier University in Cincinnati has already implemented the idea by partnering with a French company to install the first pizza ATM in North America. The company Payline says the machine is going to hold 70 pizzas. That's 70 pizzas. Each pizza will approximately be $10. Depending on what toppings you select, this part, oh, this is a part that makes, I was going to make a cheesy, really cheesy joke, <laughs> but I kind of murdered it. Yeah, you um, really but honestly, none of my jokes can be topped. Um, in other food news, in or a man in Orlando, Daniel, Daniel Frederick Rushing, was pulled over back in December and was also given a charge of possession of methamphetamine, short for meth. I mean, long for meth, I mean. The man had previously been eating an original Krispy Kreme donut, and the police officer mistook the clear donut glaze as crystal meth. The offer noticed... The officer noticed a rock-like substance on the floorboard of Rushing's car. They ran two separate tests for the, for the meth. And weeks later, after they handcuffed him and booked him into county jail, the state crime lab came back with a statement saying, the man was cleared. Now I know donuts are not the healthiest thing I should eat, but I never thought I would have get, gotten arrested for eating one. Have you ever eaten a glazed donut, Vinny? You know, I've eaten a glazed donut, but I don't know how well they go with meth. Yeah, I'm not really interested well. in trying it. Yeah, me either. Okay. Well, those are some odd news stories, I think, and I guess you never know what can happen. It the weather is starting to cool down. Um, so no guilt for staying in and watching Netflix. Frank is here to give us the lowdown on movies that are coming up. Uh, Frank, you think those movies are going to be pretty good? How do you feel? Well, the movie's up. What is up, everyone? Frank Conley back here with a few changes. Yeah, yeah, got the new, new fresh cut. Man Bun might be gone, but my cheesy puns and wonderful movie reviews are still here. So, coming up right now, we have Fifty Shades of Grey is coming back. Well, as much as anyone would love to see that. The movie is going to take place right when the first movie left off and is going to correspond directly with the second book. It's going to follow Christian Grey, played by James Dorian, and Anastasia Steele, played by Dakota Johnson. 
Grey still wrestles with his demons, and Anastasia deals with women that came before her. If you enjoyed the first installment, you'll be interested on where the story goes. Fifty Shades will be out here just in time for Valentine's Day, coming out fe te February 10th. Now, this next one, Max Steele. A teenager finds out he has superpowers and an alien companion, and now must face a mysterious force. I've never heard that plot before. In all honesty, though, Max Steele looks interesting. The film is described as an origin story for the character based on the action figure and is going to follow Max McGrath and his robotic alien partner Steele as they combine to form Max Steele, most creative name I've ever heard. I know very, right now the cast is Silicon Valley's own Josh Brenner as the voice of Steele, Ben Witchell as Max, and Anna Villafane starring as Sophie Martinez. Max Steele is flying in the theaters October 14th. Okay, this next movie took me forever to find, but I am so glad I found it. It's called Guardians. It's a Russian film taking place during the Cold War. Basically, the Guardians are the USSR's version of the Avengers. All have cool superpowers. That is said to represent the strengths of Russia and their traditions. The superheroes start with the Earthbender, Lur Landman, played by Sebastian Siak, the incredibly fast sword master, Khan Windman, played by Sanzar Medivh, the super agile Xena Waterwoman, played by Alina Lan, who, as you can probably guess, can turn into water, and probably the greatest thing I've ever seen, Ursus, who transforms into a half bear with a minigun, which is probably the greatest and most Russian thing I have ever heard of. He is played by Anton Pempushny, which is also the greatest last name. Uh, Guardians is going to come out February 23rd. Now, this next one, Underworld, is back, finally. After a six-year hiatus, Underworld is finally back. Our favorite deaf dealer, Celine, is going out to f end, finally end the Lycan and Vampire War, and apparently her blood is key to this. S Kate Beckinsale is go still going to return, playing as Celine. Toby Menzies will be Marius, and Trent Garrett is the vampire Lycan hybrid, Michael. Um, yeah, Celine, <laughs> Guard, uh, Underworld comes out January 6th. I haven't been to a movie in a while, and I guess I'll have to go check some of those out. I know, that looks amazing. Underworld, that really looks great. I'm I've never seen a movie one. like that before, I don't feel like, and I feel like that'd be good to go and see. I mean, I've always wanted to know what the Underworld looks like, I think. So we um, might, with that girl Celine, she's going to lead the way. It's a good way to figure it out. There I we mean. go, we need her blood to get there. Yes. Exactly. So when we get back, we'll take a look at the upcoming events in Fort Collins, as well as an inside look at a presidential election. I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the inaugural draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. I'm Nicole, and here at CTV, we got the chance to sit down with presidential candidate Donald Trump. So, Donald, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, Nicole, first of all, thanks for having me. Trump, 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 Trump. Trent. Trent. Nicole, honestly. Well, the weekend is almost here, so some fun events around town you can go out and enjoy. Tomorrow night, Fusion Nightclub. We'll be introducing a new activity in Old Town. Have you ever been to that bar? I love that bar. I've never been. It's really it's like a I'm nightclub from Vegas okay. that <laughs> comes to Colorado. Really? Sounds fun. Um, let's see what else. At 9 p.m., the club is going to be introducing Howl at the Moon Dueling Pianos. The event lasts all the way until midnight, hence the name Howl. I don't know how good your howling is, but mine is pretty good. 
<laughs> the event officially starts tomorrow night, so make sure you get out and enjoy the nightlife. With the fall season almost in full swing, Fusion started the event just at the right time. I don't know about you, but I'm very excited for that offer. Another, another event this weekend that's bound to make you laugh, the Comedy Brewers are having a fringe festival on both Friday and Saturday night. Located at the Wolverine Farm and Publishing and Bookstore, lot, a lot all in one, the Comedy Brewers make things up and perform on the spot based on ideas and suggestions. Friday night they are featuring long form improv starting at 7 p.m. and Saturday night they're doing short form improv at 9.45 p.m. They will have beer and wine sold for those who are old enough, so not poor Vinny, but yeah. tickets are only $2 per show, which I think is very cheap and reasonable for a college student. Or you can buy a $10 pass to see any of the five, sh five Fringe Festival shows. You can get your tickets at www.eventbrite.com. Go and check out the new Fort Collins Hangout. This weekend, the farm at Martinez Park is also partaking in fall activities. If you are looking for something fun to do this weekend with your friends or family, I have an event for you. Fort Collins community members are invited to come out Sunday, September 18th at 5 p.m. to interact with farm animals. How fun. The farm allows you to learn more about the industry and providing interaction, hands-on, farm fun for all ages. Admission for the event is free, so why wouldn't you go? If you want to attend the event, the address is 600 North Sherwood Street, Fort Collins, 80521. For all of you who haven't checked into the news this summer, we gave you a little bit of preview, but we were able to sit down with presidential candidate Donald Trump. I'm Nicole, and here at CTV we got the chance to sit down with presidential candidate Donald Trump. So Donald, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, Nicole, first of all, thanks for having me. Trump, 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 Trump. Nicole, honestly, most people don't know this about me, but I'm actually a CU Boulder graduate. And so far, I can say that I love CSU way more than I do Boulder. If you win this presidential campaign, tell me what are you thinking for the White House? Well, Nicole, I'm going to decorate everything Trump. The toilets will be Trump. The towels will be Trump. All of the wait staff will have to look like me. Trump, you're beautiful. Everybody loves you. Next month, we're sitting down with Hillary. Is there anything you would like me to tell her? I would like you to tell her that I would like my drag cleaning delivered to my apartment suite address in Trump Towers. That's all I have to say to her. Nicole, China. Everything China, China, China. And I can tell you one thing. If I don't win this presidential election, I will be running for president at CSU. Trump, Trump. Trump. That is all the time we have here at CTV News with Donald Trump. Thank you so much for coming out to Fort Collins. Back to you, Courtney and Vinny. Well, I think things are guaranteed to be interesting the closer we get to November 8th. But we wanted to personally say thank you to Donald Trump for taking his precious time to join us on CTV. It was such a blast having Donald Trump here, and truly it looks like he was wearing the wig a whole entire time. Honestly, he looks great. He, he, he looks really, really great. looks great. I thought he looked like he was in his 20s. I mean, I don't know what he's doing, but he's, he's doing it. I need to figure out he's his facial it. cream, that's for sure. But, yeah. well, it looks like that's all the time we have for our first Ram Life Entertainment show. We hope you enjoyed it all, and we will hope to see you in October for our next show. Make sure to tune in to CTV News tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for all the latest news, sports, and entertainment. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night.